the town of Winchester have recently turned down the selectmen's third attempt to pass a budget for this fiscal year. We will be at least three months into the fiscal year before a budget is passed. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? The budget has thrice been denied. Some will ask what we decrease the budget now. Some will ask that we decrease the budget now. Some will ask that we decrease the budget for a new budget to pass. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? We want a fourth budget to pass. Others suggest that we increase the budget. Now others suggest that we increase the budget. Now others suggest that we increase the budget to get a fourth budget to pass. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? A new budget is long overdue. Some suggest that we borrow more money now. Some suggest that we borrow more money now. Some suggest that we borrow more money and place the town further in debt. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? The new budget will be coming soon. Others suggest that we need some more revenue. Others suggest that we need some more revenue. Others suggest that we need some more revenue to help the town shoulder the load. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Let's increase the revenue soon. Everybody, this is Brian O'Haran, November 11, 2008. Tonight is the third quarterly review. Um, the uh, selectmen now, this group of seven, and the people that were elected to the um, Board of Education have now been in, in office for over nine months. Um, 
right? Sixth. Third quarterly. I've done two in the past. Be seeing a picture of the bungalow of Caleb Beach because he's my guest of honor tonight. He was the first settler in Winchester in 1750. We don't have any picture of Caleb and we don't have any drawing of Caleb. So I thought the best thing we could do was to be to use his picture here at least through the comet portion of the program and then we'll sit, switch to the selectmen because this is the quarterly review. Before I begin tonight, I want to thank everyone for all of the comment and feedback on last week's program. It was an inordinate amount. It's more than I've had on a lot of programs put together. Especially the comments on the new lament, the lament of Caleb Beach. Somebody actually walked up to me on the street the other day and sang the song to me, so I find that quite a compliment. Many copies of the lament have been requested. I didn't realize how many residents watch this program. There's no way to really tell although I had an inkling, because people do ask me questions all the time on the street, so I know they must be watching at least part of it. Some say they flick through, you know, while they're changing channels all the time, and it's kind of a way people do things nowadays. It's good to see the interest and the enthusiasm, because sometimes well, you wonder about it. It was also brought to my attention by several viewers that the average 10-year town of Winchester tax increase of 3.93 percent. Many grants and some private investments, etc., have funded a good deal of improvement over the years, and you can see the results all around the town. More improvements are on the way. Others pointed out many more verses that I could add to the lament, even, sug even suggesting a few. The lament of Caleb Beach was intended to emphasize how much the town is in further need of additional taxpayers to come and help to fund the work that still remains. So we've done a very good job with our 3.93% um, tax average over the last 10 years, but we still have a long way to go. So we do need more help. And, um, Otherwise, it'll be a ter terrific burden on the existing taxpayers in very difficult times. Now, remember, when we first started this program a year ago, we predicted that we were going to be for a tough tax year here, and it's going to be even tougher next year, probably the year after. So uh, there's not much additional revenue in sight here, and, uh, the, and the times uh, are tough. As you know, there's plenty of work yet to be done. So thanks again to all of you who watch this program, especially those who watch regularly. I appreciate it. Now we'll go to the agenda for this evening's quarterly review. First, I, do, I did the comments as usual, uh, the campaign promises. Uh, I'm going to go through those again. I do that at each quarterly review, and I do send them off to the parties to make sure they're accurate before I use them. Notices. I got one notice tonight about the charter revision. There was a meeting held on Monday. And then I'm going to go through the major uh, strata, uh, sections of this uh, uh, review, revenue, cost savings, property tax, expedite the solution, and then important votes. Uh, act for all of these, I will, they'll be broken down into three pieces, important votes for quarter three, statistics for quarter three, selectman statistics, what, you know, how they voted, and statistics for quarter one through quarter three, as I promised I would do. Now, what I'd like to point out here is that if I were doing a normal quarterly review in a company or in my own personal life, my personal expenses, I would have very clear objectives of exactly what has to be done in each quarter. And they're always results orientated. Do this by then, that kind of thing. And then I can sit down every quarter and measure it and see if I achieved what I was going to achieve. If not, how do I correct myself so that I can achieve the, the next objective? Well, our town isn't structured that way yet. It will be someday, hopefully, if we can stabilize the, uh, the, the management long enough uh, to be able to do it. That takes four or five years. 
uh, as I always say on this program. So uh, then we would measure. He said he was going to do this by that date. Did he do it by that date? Right? And he said we said we were going to get some revenue in by that date. Did we do it by that date? Well, we don't have that now. So all I can do is go by the voting records until we get to the point where we can start to measure things because we have plans to measure them against. Right now, we do not have plans to measure things against most things, and except for the uh, nor normal budget, fiscal budget. Um, ex and, you know, as Henry Fayol said, and I pointed out on this program in the past, that's the most important thing, the plans. You've got to plan it. Then you got to measure against the plans, and you got to do things and organize to be a, for success. So all the all the things we talked about in, in the hour, we talked about Henry Fail. So anyway, um, we're going to go through that now. The first thing I want to put up is the, uh, one notice, and that's got nothing to do with the quarterly review. But it, I thought it, I might get it up here. I'll talk more about it in future weeks. As a result of a selectman's special meeting on September 9, 2008, there will now be at least five questions on the November 4th election ballot concerning the charter revision. The content must be approved at, at, a, at Monday's regular selectman meeting and by the state during their 45-day review period. So once the selectmen agree the questions, which they haven't quite done yet, they still looking at the wording with the town attorney, uh, I think that should be done by Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, and then it goes off to the state for a 45-day review, and if they don't want any changes made, then, uh, um, then that's that. It's just wording changes they're looking at. So my guess is whatever changes they want will probably be applied, and then they'll get onto the ballot with it, whatever wording they agree. A fourth and fifth question will be added. We already said we are going to do three questions. So I will inform you of the content of the five questions on a future program. We don't, I don't have that now. So I'm going to start speeding up a little here. Major campaign uh, objectives. These are what the people said when they ran for office. Revenue, facilitate, encourage, responsible, balanced development. Promote economic development. We're talking about the Republicans now. Objectives, Republic, Republican campaign promises. Promote economic development for new and existing businesses. Cost saving. Manage the town of Winchester and school costs responsibly. Property tax management. Increase the net brand list. Encouraging the addition of new taxpayers in a balanced manner. Um, charter revision, consider a mayoral form of government that's happening or moving along. They may not get a mayoral form, the voters may not agree. Remember this town is run by the selectmen and the voters together as a team, it says so right in the charter. So the selectmen can't do anything on their own, the voters have to approve uh, these kind of things. Infrastructure, update the town and school buildings where necessary in an evolutionary economic manner. Move the responsibility of maintaining the school buildings to the town, have a full-time recreation director, have a full-time fire marshal, and have a full-time building inspector. Add to the, the existing part-time building inspector and make him full-time. There is a, a, a building inspector, but there's two people in that office. One works half-time, as I understand it. Um, now, um, these here uh, will end up in an additional column. They all uh, require uh, the budget. We don't have the budget yet, and that's being voted on. So these will not be fulfilled until, or, or unfulfilled until the budget is approved or defeated. As far as the Democrats are concerned, promote energy conservation. They're, they're working pretty hard at that, as you know from the meetings. Promote new bond issue for town and school improvements. That's what the bond issue that uh, the Republican uh, majority canceled when they came into office. So. Uh, they're still working on it, though, and uh, off on the side as a party, but uh, as far as the selectmen are uh, concerned, they're not working on this objective. Promote, con except for the minority selectmen, promote conservation on the town and lake, that was one of their uh, aims, and promote improvements around town parks and along Main Street. There are things happening in that area. The methodology for these quarterly reviews is kind of straightforward. It's, it's mathematical. It's not political. It's management, not po uh, politics. Compile report from meeting minutes. That's how you get facts. You get them right from the meeting minutes of the town that the town clerk writes after every meeting, and they're usually very, very accurate. 
So these are facts. They come out of the uh, meeting minutes. No uh, supposition here, unless I say so. Produce statistics from voting entries in the report. So what I do is I go through the uh, I go through the reports. I can show you a copy here. And I, uh, as you know from my weekly meetings, I go through the report and I divide it into five categories. I divide it into revenue. I divide it into cost savings. I divide it into a thing I call expediting the solution. That means moving things along, making, making decisions every week to keep on to get things done. And um, then there's the additional campaign promises. I also put a little tax section in there because that's one of the concerns, uh, the cost savings and the taxes as well, because that's what they promised at, at when they were running for office. Now, this is the report that I compile. This is the third quarterly report. And in this report, it's divided into those sections, I have all of the votes taken from the town minutes. Now this report, as I say on all my other quality views, this goes on for pages. There's probably 40 pages here of this. And it's in very small print, so we can't go through it here. But I have that report. And what I've done for uh, this evening is I've divided it into what I call the big ticket items in the quarterly report, the most important uh, uh, actions. And um, there are a lot less that are in the bigger report because I try to say what are the most important actions in each of the categories, right? And I'm going to go through those tonight. So they're in a smaller report, which is still too big for this program. I, I, but I, I, at least the print's a little bigger. But this, I couldn't go through this in an hour, so I've, I've actually um, divided again and uh, put in the very important ones on separate papers which I have here to go over tonight. Now one of the things I want to point out here before I start through it is we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve meetings in this last quarter. That's a lot more than we usually have. Usually we have about six or seven. But because of the budget and all those and the other exercises that are happening with legal, uh, a legal case and all, we've had a few more meetings than we would normally have. So now I'm going to start, and we'll start out with revenue. Revenue. Third quarter. These are some of the actions that I selected out of these reports and out of the minutes to show you what's really happening. Now in the revenue section, there's a lot of actions like sell this piece of property, don't sell this piece of property, sell this piece of property. Those are what I would call very important actions. They're all in the report, and you'll see the numbers when I go through them. But I didn't select them for this, for this uh, sort, because I, I try to deal with what I call the bigger, more important revenue uh, decisions that were made in the last quarter that were going to help us to really get out of this pickle we're in and uh, be able to get more revenue into this town on a grand scale. Uh, so there's a lot of actions that I will not put up right now, but they're there. And anybody who wants to see them can go read the minutes uh, in the town hall. They've got a nice book of all the minutes, easy to read, and you can even make copies for yourself. So let's start with revenue. One of the important things they did this quarter is they authorized the town manager to find funding to implement as much of the 1999 strategy plan of redevelopment as possible. That's the downtown Main Street redevelopment plan that these people, uh, this, this selectman group, brought out of mothballs. It was uh, put together by uh, the Economic Development Commission in 1999. They brought it out of mothballs when Bruce Gresick was here and then with, with the new town manager, Keith uh, Robbins, and they are starting to move it forward with the Economic Development Commission, and uh, they, he was authorized to do that in this quarter, the town manager. That's a big step forward. That's one of the campaign promises that, there, that the uh, um, that the majority made, not not in specifically for that plan, but for to get the town moving, to get these plans out, and let's get on with it, and let's start uh, getting things done. The next one was an executive uh, session on legal strategy regarding the planning and zoning member. They selectmen consider that important because they think that's imp that's an important 
uh, area for them to be involved in because of the revenue uh, for the town. Appoint a present alternate to be a permanent member to fill the vacancy on the Planning and Zoning Commission. That has been done, and uh, the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission now is up to full five-member um, strength and has been. That was done in the third quarter. Form, and this is very important, form a three-member subcommittee to discuss the town manager's goals and objectives. This is the long-term plan. Uh, they don't say five years, but it's a move towards a five-year plan. It might start out a two-year plan or a three-year plan, and it'll start out kind of sketchy in a lot of ways. But over a few years, if we can keep the stability long enough, this will evolve into a responsible plan that everybody in town can see, and we can measure against, and we can make decisions towards. Now, if we have a disruption here in this, is Brian's comment, in the... Uh, in the, in the town management over the next year or so, then everything goes back to square one again, or at least it gets crippled for a while. So we have to be very careful, and I'll be talking about that in future programs. Next, very important, everybody, by the way, this was done unanimously, and I said on my previous programs, all seven selectmen voted in, uh, uh, to this one and another one that will be coming up in a few minutes. And they're to be commended for that. Work together very positively. That'll be a plan that has revenue and cost and, and uh, capital and everything right in there so we can all see it in the way a Harvard Business School would teach you to put together a plan. POCD authorized the town manager to sign the contract between the town of Winchester and Technical Planning Associates, Inc. Now remember, in this quarter, uh, and even maybe a little in the quarter before, the selectmen did fund some money for the plan of conservation and development. They funded more than perhaps all the last 10 years put together, and they got a little bit of a bond, uh, not, I'm sorry, a grant for 20000 they're working on. So they'll be funded to be, get together. So what they've done here is they've gone out and hired technical planning associates from New Haven. It's a group, design group, and they're working with planning and zoning on the plan of conservation and development, with, uh, which we need very badly in this town. So they've authorized the town manager to sign the application from the Office of Policy and Management, OPM, for the Municipal Plan of Conservation and Development grant. That's that $20,000 grant I was telling you about. So, uh, so that's moving. Adopt. Now, this is the other important one that everybody did unanimously. They're all to be commended for that. Adopt the agreed town manager's goals and objectives. They have been now adopted, and he's working towards those. You can get a copy from the town manager's office. They're public information, and you can see. Now, they're not what they're going to be in three or four more years if we can keep stability in this whole, uh, in this whole management area in town, but uh, they're a start, and they're going in the right direction. And then authorize the town manager to sign the application for the municipal plan of conservation and development grant. So those what I consider the most important ones. There's other ones in there for the third quarter. There were 28 votes on, for revenue uh, altogether. Now, I uh, did my little sort into the revenue column. I think it's pretty accurate. Somebody else might want to go through all the minutes and sort them themselves. They can do that, but it'll come out pretty close. So I always say this is plus or minus 2-3%. It's very hard to get them exactly on a spot because different people uh, think differently about things. So. Uh, number one, we did 28 total votes in this third quarter of, on the revenue issues. Fracasso voted 27 times yes. He recused himself. Uh, our, this is the uh, column for um, abstain, abstentions and recusals. He did that once for a legal reason. Uh, Berlinski, 27 and 1 for a legal reason, abstain. Liskin, 24 and 1 for a legal reason, abstain. Cap Bianca, sorry again, uh, Mr. Cap Bianca, for that, but the name doesn't fit in here too well. So 22, 0, and 1. And Ham, 22, 0, and 1. They all recused themselves on the same action. It was a legal to, thing to do with planning and zoning uh, uh, lawyers. And they have no no's, zero no's there in the revenue. So they're be to, to be commended for that. Now, Renzullo and Perez are in the minority party. That's why I separate them here. And Renzullo voted 17 times um, for um, revenue issues, nine times against. A lot of these are small 
land sales around the lake and things like that, so they don't all have equal weight, and I always say that on these programs, just because somebody votes no doesn't always mean they're wrong, but this is the only way you can get a, a, a picture of, of things. Um, if we keep voting no on revenue, then we won't get any revenue, and it's the kind of the way it goes. And then they are to be commended because they did not abstain. Remember last year we had a, a last uh, group, we had a lot of abstentions, none here. So the minority uh, party is to be commended because they have, you'll see throughout this program, don't, they don't abstain much anymore like they used to in the last administration. Here we go with the year to date, three quarters all added up. Revenue for Castle 45-0-1, Berlinski 45-0-1, Liskin 40-0-1, Ham 42-0-1. Now some of these meetings, some of these people weren't here, and for all seven people, if they weren't at a meeting, I didn't include them in this percentage calculation I made later, to be fair to everybody. So now uh, Cappy, he was absent quite a bit during the quarter, uh, one, at least one meeting, maybe two. So 40 uh, in favor and one abs uh, uh, abstention here. To, all these are the same one from that legal case uh, on planning and zoning. And then Renzullo, 25 yeses altogether over the three quarters. 13 no's and zero abstention on revenue. And the same with Perez, 25, 18, and zero. So they're being really commended for that. The percentages aren't so hot here, and they, they have good reason for that, and you know they would argue that these uh, that's good for them, but as far as revenue is concerned for the town, these are all 98 percents here. 98 percent of the time, each of these people voted in favor of getting more revenue in town. Uh, in this case, um, they 66% uh, for Renzullo, 58% for uh, Selectman Perez. Now for cost savings, again, for cost savings, we're going to talk about um, the major decisions that were made. Again, there were plenty of cost saving decisions made, but I only singled out a few here for your attention tonight so I could keep it within the hour. authorize the town manager to apply for the small cities grant project for sidewalk and pedestrian safety improvements in the downtown area. That's very important for us because that means we'll be getting on with the second phase of this and there's a lot of sidewalks down there along Main Street and all that that uh, will fall into this category when we get moving on. So uh, they authorized him to apply for the grant and that's a cost saving to us because even though we have to pay a certain amount of it, I think, on this one I don't know for sure, that uh, we will get some money for the state uh, and that's why he's had to apply there for that grant. Now this cost savings area has a lot of that kind of thing in it because where most of our cost savings come now is from getting grants. <laughs> they also cost us revenue, too, but uh, some don't, some do. The next one is adopt the resolution for phase two of the village green improvements. And, and as you know, uh, we're moving along down there, finishing up phase one of the village green, and uh, as soon as they put the bids out for the contractor for the second um, phase, and I guess final phase, of cleaning up that green. Uh, I think the first phase is going to end, as I said last week, around the end of November, somewhere in December, and then they're going to get, uh, they're in a process, you're going to have to get new bids for the, for the, the state made them get more uh, bids for the second uh, phase, and that'll be starting, and uh, that's what we're talking about here. So um, this is very good for us. It means we're going to, in a year or two, we'll be done with the Village Green improvements. It does look good. They're putting the curbing in now. I saw that today when I was down by the university. Uh, and uh, that's uh, moving along very well. Authorize the town manager to enter into such agreements, contracts, and execute all documents necessary to said grant with the state of Connecticut for the Village Green improvements, phase two, steep, 200. 2008-21. So this uh, happened during this quarter, another positive step. Of course, it has been going along for many quarters and many years, I guess, to get this far. So this group doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, get all the credit for this, but uh, they, they get credit for moving it along during their term. Um, 
deny the civil service request for an attorney that co that saved us some money because the civil service came in and asked for some money to hire a lawyer, uh, I think to sue the town over some issue, and uh, and that was turned down by the selectmen. So I put that into the cost saving uh, side here. Enter an agreement with and deliver it to the state of Connecticut Department of Energy Management and Homeland Security to authorize it and authorize the town manager to carry it out. This is all the things we have to do with the state and I guess federal government uh, to uh, to be eligible for Homeland Security money. And uh, it's a long process. Anything you do with the state and federal government in town is a long process. But uh, we do need some of that money, and uh, we have to keep current. So they have authorized the town manager to carry that out. Now, remember, I, didn't, I pointed out on other programs in the past that whenever we get a new town manager, this is part of the problem getting a t new town manager every two, two years, that, you know, not only do we have to go find one and get them to come here or her to come here, but then we have to get them up to speed. And part of the process of getting them up to speed is getting them to know the town a bit, but also we have to transfer all the powers to them that the last town manager had. So this is an example of that. The town manager is authorized to sign the agreement entitled Agreement Between the State of Connecticut and the Town of Winchester for the development of contract plans, specifications, and estimates for Main Street Enhancement Phase 2, utilizing federal funds under the enhancement component of the Surface Transportation Program. Now, that is uh, very important for us, and the thing is moving along. And again, towards the end of the year here, towards the winter, you're going to be things hap see things happening there, and uh, and then we'll have that out of the way, and that's all done with our uh, our 3.393 percent taxes over the la average over the last 10 years that I mentioned earlier in the program, and uh, and grants. So between the, the two, uh, we're, we're getting most of that work done. And that's something all seven people are pulling for. There's nobody against that, getting the village uh, um, green or the town green uh, in shape. So as far as votes are concerned for that third quarter there, cost savings, there were 10 total votes in the third quarter. Um, you know, these meetings go on and on for hours, <laughs> and we have two of them a month. But when you start to look at the end of the quarter at you know how many things got done um, you can boil them down you know important things that got done you can kind of boil them down in this case we're boiling them down to two there were ten total votes I don't think I have ten when I boil them down but we'll, some of them are you know give a, like uh, uh, small things that uh, really really just day-to-day -day business type things so ten total votes here for Caso, ten perfect score Berlinski ten Perfect score. Liskin, eight, zero and zero. He wasn't here for one meeting at least, maybe two. That's probably why that's that way. Uh, Selectman Ham, nine, zero and zero. I know he also missed one meeting in the third quarter. Renzulo, six in favor, two against, and two abstains. Selectman Perez, seven yeses, two knows and one abstain during the third quarter and that was May 6th to August 6th matter of fact I just saw I made a mistake here so I'll change it this is May here so okay now we're gonna look at the cost savings from May I had a mistake here I just that's May 6 207 I'm sorry it is right November 6 207 to August 6 208 that's the uh, three quarters. And we're going to look at the totals now for that. So there were 33 total votes. Remember, there were only 10 in the third quarter. And if you divide by three, because we had three quarters, that's about 10 in each quarter. So it's 33 in the cost-saving area. One of the good things in the cost-saving area is that everybody kind of votes in balance. And the, 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 the numbers are higher percentages. The bad news is we don't do enough. It's only 33 over nine months, so that and that's in total. Some are insignificant, some are more significant. So, uh, for Caso, 33, perfect score. Berlinski, 33 yeses, perfect score. 
Ham, 32, and one abstain. I think he abstained on that Kelly Kitchen uh, con small contract for $100 or whatever, $150, because he had done some free work for the, for her and uh, when her place caught fire and he didn't want to, uh, he recused himself on that one. And then uh, Capabianca, 33, 0, 0, perfect score. So you've got 100%, 100%, 94%, 97%, and 100 percent. Now remember, I fact out all absences on these. That's why you see these high percentages uh, on uh, when somebody wasn't there um, for any meeting. We didn't count uh, either for or against on these votes because they didn't vote. So the next one is Renzullo, 27 uh, in the yes column and three in the no column and three in the abstain column for the year. Most of these happen to do sort of well, it's a couple of, I guess happened in the third quarter. Uh, and then Perez, 26, 5, and 2. So um, even though there's a big difference here between 33 and 26, so almost a third there, uh, we still got pretty high relative percentages, 82% and 79%. So normally from quarter to quarter, in the cost saving side, uh, everybody votes kind of in sync on that. But uh, there are some major differences between uh, the majority and the minority on this, and, uh, and uh, they show up in the voting, as you can see here. Property tax. Everybody's interested in property taxes, especially at this time of year when we're still voting on the, going for a fourth vote on the budget. The property taxes um, are very important in our town. We've averaged 3.93% each year over the last 10 years. That includes bond issues being are in there as well. And usually what happens if you get a big bond issue in that, that costs interest, then people tend to, to be tough on their voting when you come for the yearly annual budget. So it averages out over the last 10 years to 3.93%. And that's the money we've had to spend. Um, there are those in town who think we should have more property taxes. I said in my song at the beginning of the program, oh dear, what can the matter be? And there are people who think we should have less taxes. And uh, they're fighting every year to get have less taxes. And usually the people who think we should have more taxes, they also want higher services like better test grades, more teachers, better buildings and all that kind of thing, quite admirable, good good streets, all the things that we all want. And then um, the people who, who don't want any more taxes, they're more in favor of getting more revenue in town to help pay for anything we do want. And then they're even skeptical about that because they think maybe if we get the revenue in town, in town we'll blow it, you know, and we won't spend it on the right things and we won't be any better off. There, there are people who think that way. I think that's, I don't think that way, but some people do think that way. So with these property taxes, um, this, this, this town has uh, um, a great interest in, and uh, it, it's, 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 I think, consumes most people's time here. And the ones, the people who do want to cut the taxes, as far as I understand it, and I may be wrong on this, they think we should have less police, we should have less overhead in the schools, we should have less of a lot of things. And so, uh, so they're in there constantly. And this is a good time um, for you to pay attention to that because all that's happening right now as we go for this next budget, the fourth one. And one time a few years ago, I went for seven times. And I think it went all the way up to March of the next year last time. I'm not positive. But all right, so property tax. Uh, the property taxes that were done in this quarter, what I consider the more important ones, were approve about 40 reductions and additions to the 208-209 budget, about 354000 Now what happens in the budget process is the town manager comes forward with a budget for the proposed budget for the next year, in this case 2008-2009, and he comes in with a proposed budget. And then the selectmen have to review, and by the way, the Board of Education comes in with a proposed budget. And then the, the Board of Selectmen, seven people, have to look at it. They talk it over with the town people. They, they all come into public hearing meetings, the managers do, and they talk about it. And then sometimes they voluntarily give up some of the money that they want, and sometimes the selectmen have to say, make decisions. 
And in this case, they made decisions on about 354,000 by various voting mixes. And when I say various voting mixes, that means some of the selectmen voted yes, let's raise the school budget. Others said no, let's cut the school budget, right? And uh, one or the other one. And then you go on to the next one, let's give more money to the police for a police car, and some say yes and some say no, and it might be the one saying yes that said no on a school, and it might be the one saying no that said yes on the school. And as you get through 30, 40 of these uh, votes, that gets kind of mixed, you know, a big mix in there. So uh, that's what I mean by various voting mixtures. There were about 37 votes taken at, uh, at the meeting to uh, first meeting to increase. This was for the first uh, pass uh, by, the, um, by the citizens in the voting. But uh, there were about 37 votes taken at the meeting to increase or reduce the 2008-2009 forecast. So that was the first meeting. And then uh, the, the mill rate was also set during this quarter by the selectmen based upon the revaluation that was done after all of the um, re requests for uh, change had been made with the town and uh, appeals and things like that. And they set the mill rate at 24.67 mills. That's very important for this quarter. They have to do that by charter, and they did it. And that's the mill rate we're using right now until we pass a budget. If the budget is passed with an increase, we will have a higher mill rate. If it's passed with a decrease, then uh, we, uh, we won't have a, a higher tax rate. I think the mill rate will go down a little bit, but I'm not positive on that. I think it will go down. So approved several reductions and additions, about six, to the 208-209 budget. This was after it failed. Then it went back and they had to go again, and uh, the total reductions were about 275553 of expense and 240000 in revenue by various voting mixes. So these, uh, there's no magic wand here. When the, when the town manager, new town manager, and his predecessor, uh, Bruce Gresick, were putting the budget, budget together, they saw all the needs we have here in this town. And they were anxious to see a lot of these needs get satisfied, wants and needs get satisfied. I mean, we got a computer in the police department that hardly works and is limping along. And police stations nowadays, they run by uh, totally integrated computer systems. So there, there are those kind of issues around. So they put a budget together, and they came to the selectmen with about 7, I don't remember exactly, 7.1% or so increase in the budget. Same with the schools. They originally came, you know, for like 7% increase. Uh, and uh, maybe it was a little less, but it was in that neighborhood. The selectmen beat it back to about 5% uh, when it failed that referendum and a uh, town referendum. And then they went, made some cuts here, and then they went back out and uh, went to another town meeting and referendum at about 5% increase. That got turned down. So they went back and they made some more cuts and uh, and uh, additions, they added some and subtracted some, and they came up with a budget of 2.7% and went to a town meeting and a town referendum, and that failed again just a few days back. So now they're in the process, starting Monday, I think, in going through another look at the budget and see, should they raise the budget or should they lower the budget, as I said in my song at the beginning of the program. Nobody really knows what it takes to pass a budget. There's nobody has a crystal ball. There's nobody has a magic wand. There's so many different people, as I tried to get across in the song earlier, that have different opinions on this, uh, that, uh, that uh, it's hard to predict whether a budget is going to pass or fail. And, uh, and there are many, many people who have political agendas when it comes to this stuff. And, but it's the town manager who's got to run the town, and the selectmen who have to run the town. So um, they're going to do their best to try to figure out what they think will pass in the next, in the next budget uh, uh, town meeting and referendum. And now we're sure now here that we're going to go at least another month. We're going to be three months into the fiscal year, maybe four months into the fiscal year, without a budget. The fiscal year started on July 1. Now, I want to tell you that we're at risk when we run without a budget, because even though we say in the charter that we're going to fall back to last year's budget, we're still spending money in these three, four months when we don't have a budget, and that, that's risky, because we may spend more money than we're going to have in the end. We don't exactly know, and some decisions on, like, for example, whether we hire a full-time rec director or not, 
they're, they're predicated on getting this budget passed. Either we hire one or we don't hire one, you know, and we have a half-time one or not. So I think right now they're working on an uh, hourly basis, so they can go either way once the budget is passed. Next one is approve several reductions and additions. I, oh, I went through that already. Okay, by various mixes. So the next one was 275, 553, and 240 uh, in revenue, right? And then uh, various voting mixes there, too. Okay, now, as far as the third quarter, quarter property tax thing went, that's kind of even here. There were seven votes there in property taxes in that quarter. And now, each meeting produced like 30 different votes, but here in, in this thing, I, I, uh, I, I collapsed them into one meeting. You know, it's 30, 40 votes in one meeting that produced this much money. So we could, we could balloon these up to 40 or 50 votes here. Uh, and I do have a list of, I've compiled a list from the minutes of, of the budget meetings of who voted for what on every single issue, who voted to go up or down or whatever, and maybe after the budget is passed, I'll go through those numbers with you on this program. It'll take me a whole program to do so, and then you can see how each selectman voted on every issue. Who voted for this, and who voted for that, and who didn't vote for this, and who didn't vote for that, and, but anyway, for this particular exercise, it's, I got it pretty even here, uh, and um, now, it's a little tricky, too, when you start voting on budgets, because you might vote no on an issue, on one item that's $500,000 and yes on an item that's $5,000. So it gets a little tricky. But we had, I wanted to do something to give you an idea what's happening there. And uh, it's kind of balanced, to be honest with you. Now, when you look at the individual votes, you'll find that the majority party made most of the, uh, made most of the motions, most of the seconds, and, and most of the, uh, and then voted m yes most of the time, one way or another. So, uh, and it balanced probably a lot more towards them uh, than the ratio of their numbers on, on the board. Okay, now, as far as the three quarters are concerned, we had 18 votes in this category. Ricasso, 18, 0 and 0, 100 percent. Berlinski, 18, 0 and 0, 100 percent. Liskin, 17, 1 no. And uh, zero, I think he voted no in one of the public uh, first responder issues there. And then zero uh, abstains. Ham, 18, zero and zero. With Cappy, zero and zero. So you can see that uh, they're doing some of the heavy lifting here in this uh, property tax area. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we started high, and all the decisions they make now are dropping it down lower, which uh, is a delight to many people and not a delight to others. And then Renzulo, 13 votes. Uh, yes, one no, and four abstains in this area. And those were early in, early in his career here when he first started and wanted to get up to speed, so I don't hold that too much against him. And then Selectman Perez, 10, 6, no's and one abstain. And so we got 72% and 79% for them. So you can see how this is happening. So, um, and again, I always point out that just because you're in a minority doesn't mean you shouldn't make the majority of the motions. <laughs> you can always make motions, no matter whether you're in a minority or the majority. And. Uh, um, that doesn't happen too much here. The majority makes most of the motions in this administration, and uh, that's proven in the records at the town hall. We're only dealing with, with facts here. There is a little bit of uh, subject. Uh, I have to make some decisions here to put them in these categories, but they're not going to be off by very much uh, when, you, when somebody else looks at them. Expedite the solution. That means keep things moving along. Let's try to get things done. We call it in business getting things done. <laughs> So expedite the decision-making, appoint a new member to the redevelopment agency. I try not to use names on here uh, unless they're selectmen or board of education members, but even there I don't try, I try not to as much as I can. Appoint a new member to the redevelopment agency. Um, they reappointed two members to the Soldiers Monument Commission, and as I told you, these are very important because some of these people are in for many years, and if they have a certain way of thinking, that'll be there for quite a while. So it's up to each. It's part of the, uh, the job of each group of selectmen to 
uh, point when the appointments come due to appoint the people they think will do the best for the town uh, onto these commissions. And uh, when you have uh, the, the polarity we have in this town between the, the two political parties and even the third political party, then you, uh, you will always get almost the opposite <laughs> the next time around. So in the long run, it should balance out. And that's kind of the way the American system works. Um, happens at the national level and the state level, same thing. So they reappointed two of the members to the Soldiers Monument Commission, and uh, they did a good job in the past. And uh, again, some of these here are irregardless of party. You know, they're not always it isn't always which party they're in. It's as I said last week. How do they think? What are their ideas about these commissions? And uh, do they balance the people that are there already, or they, or, or will they create an imbalance? Will, they, will there be too many people of one particular suasion? Now, some people want to have imbalances in the commissions, and uh, that's where the argument comes in once in a while. So these happen to be the Soldiers Monument Commission and the very important redevelopment uh, agency. Sign the letter of intention to preserve and enhance the protection of our watershed areas and the, sur and the surroundings of their habitats. Now. This was agreed to unanimously by now these five majority businessmen and the two minority uh, uh, members. So this is a very important thing. And I want to belabor this a little because there is a tendency sometimes by people to think that they are the guardians of the environment and they are the guardians of, uh, of uh, pre preservation. But I want you to know that with a few exceptions on the normal distribution curve, most people are in favor of preserving the environment. Most people are in favor of having a good environment and preserving the lakes and preserving the woods and preserving everything, okay? But it's a question as to what extreme do you go? And almost anybody is, is in favor of cutting a tree down if that's exactly where their house is going to go. I've seen some people that are extreme environmentalists, but if their house is going to go where that 200-year-old oak tree is, down comes the oak tree. So, um, we probably have another few hundred years to go. So, there's a, there's a lot of differences in here, and I want to point out here that these seven selectmen are all in favor of preservation, but what they're looking for, all of them, is a balance. So, I wouldn't want you to think that anybody uh, or any party or any group uh, has, uh, has a monopoly on this kind of thinking. That's our way. I just went to a meeting up in Bantam the other night with a lady named Mrs. Griswold uh, doing the uh, honors. Um, there were about 60 people in the uh, in the room, and uh, um, it was all about preservation. Matter of fact, she talked for two hours about preserving the lives of bats, which is one of the most important mammals that we have in this world, and how important the bat is to everybody. And uh, so we've got people. Uh, she was up at the Nature Preserve up there in uh, around Litchfield, Bantam area, and there were some people there from our from area here I, that I recognized, and I saw others on their uh, list. So we're all interested in that, and uh, you will always find some people who 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 aren't. But I think you're talking about a very very small minority. So I'll, I'm belaboring this because I want you to see that these came up at in this last quarter. So let nobody think that people aren't in favor of this. The big question is always one, once you get past the simple things that everybody can do, is one of money, right? So um, they'll do what they can without the money, and uh, they'll try to get money wherever they can, but in the end, if we really want to do everything we want to do around here, matter of fact, I saw a farmer there up in Bantam who, who was a businessman in New York and had a lot of land in the area, and he donated a lot of land to the land uh, preserve up there. Uh, part of the whole land preservation system they've got up there to uh, help the, uh, the wildlife and uh, all kinds of wildlife, including the vegetation. So, so there are still a lot of people there around who want to do that. And I belabor that on, on, on purpose here because of our situation with the lake and with the um, land preservation people in town. They're trying to do a good job at keeping as much of the land uh, uh, from being developed on as possible. Um, 
w within reasonable limitations. Okay, and then continue to explore the addition of a new position. Um, you know, we, we just had somebody leave the uh, Public Works Department, retire a few months ago, and they decided in the budget not to replace that position, and they haven't. Now, that might get changed in the next round of the budget, but uh, the uh, they talked about a position uh, called the Assistant Director of Public Works and Facilities. And they said this is an area that they might try to share with the education system and have this person. Now this has been put on the table, they're still thinking about it, there's no movement in this area, but it's something that's important because what they want to do is, is have three different groups in town pay for this position and everybody use that position as well. Okay, we're getting towards the end now, here's the third quarter expedite the solution. 26 total votes in there because there's a lot of daily small stuff that has to be done like let the taxpayer give some $500 ba back to somebody who overpaid their taxes, that kind of thing. That's included in this 26 for this quarter. And again, here we go. 26 for Fracasso, perfect record. 26 for Brolinski, perfect record. Liskin, 19, 0 and 0, no no's here at all. And Cappy, uh, Capianca, 22, 0 and 0. Okay. And the reason their numbers are a little lower is because they were absent on the night that those votes were taken. Renzullo, 18, 4 against, no abstains. Perez, 17 and 2, no abstains. So that's very positive for the third quarter. Now as far as the total year is concerned, from November 6, 2007 to August 6 since the election, uh, August 6, 2008, um, we've had two, 102 in the expedite uh, the solution area, which we, which is sensible because those are the things you keep the business going every day with, and you know, uh, flood in the city hall, let's fix that, that kind of thing. So, for Caso, a hundred yes votes, one hundred, one no vote, and one abstain. He abstained because we're voting on something with to do with the school or the church that he goes to, and he didn't want to. St. Joseph's or St. Anthony's, I can never remember which is which, but he didn't want to vote on that because he's heavily involved in that whole situation. Berlinski, otherwise he would have had a pretty good record here, right? Uh, Berlinski, 100, two no's, and no abstains. Liskin, 93 yeses and two no's. Ham, 95 yeses and two no's. These guys were all 98%. And Kappa Bianca, who wins in this area, 18, 0, and 0 for 100 percent. And I think I got the wrong number there. There's something wrong with that number, so I'll, I'll have to look at those. I'll correct it next week. I, th that should be a bigger number right there. Um, that's a mistake. And then Renzulo, 66, 6, and 4, 87 percent. Actually, this should be 100, because I know it's 100%, so 102, rather. So I'll, I'll get that next week. Renzullo, six, six no's, four abstains. Perez, over the whole year, 79 yeses in this area, 15 no's, and four abstains. So she's at 81%, 87%, and the rest of them are around this 98% area there. So we're getting towards the end of the program now. I've only got a couple minutes, so I just want to say to you, the biggest thing you can do now to help these selectmen, any one of you, is you is to get your comment to them by in person, by mail, by telephone, uh, in any way you can. So what you think it will take to pass this budget on a fourth attempt. The more people that give input to them, uh, the better off uh, their decision making will be. With that, I say thank you. I'll be back next week. There's a select a meeting next week, so we'll talk about that. And in future meetings, we're going to be talking a bit about the mayoral uh, and, the, and the town manager forms of government. Thank you. <laughs>